I don't know what kind of money most of these quote unquote budget setup videos think I have. They must be thinking I'm breeding salamanders or something. Man, I got $30 in my checking and I still gotta go get gas, groceries, and pay my taxes. So if you're like me and you don't breed salamanders for a living, today we're gonna ball on a budget and I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best budget 144 hertz monitor out there. To which I introduced the BenQ Zoe XL2411P with a redonkulous 144 hertz refresh rate and a one millisecond response time this monitor is swift fast and smooth as hell for 170 bucks you honestly can't get this quality or performance anywhere else the zoe is a smaller monitor but that isn't a bad thing smaller monitors provide less lag there isn't as much head movement as everything is just in your line of sight and the biggest factor for me was the desk space it takes up which isn't very much making it ideal for smaller setups there are two features that stood out to me while using this monitor first being the black equalizer which lifts the black color colors without overexposing the whole screen, making it easier to see enemies and smaller things in darker areas. In combination with color vibrance and other visual settings, you can tune different settings to maximize the visual experience with different games, and you can save those settings to different hotkeys, making it easier to switch back and forth. The second feature I really liked was the amount of swivel and tilting that it can do, meaning you have the most optimal viewing angle. As someone with the posture of a shrimp, I have constant neck and upper back pain, and this actually helped avoid it after long hours of play. Aside from swiveling, tilting, and panning, it can also pivot to 90 degrees, meaning you get more vertical screens so you can write essays on it, code, or just browse the internet. Or if you're a lazy piece of shit like me, you can watch Netflix lying down. The Zoe offers a low blue light setting and flicker-free technology, which both help any eye strain that you may get with conventional LCDs. There are a lot of other smaller features built into the frame and exterior of the monitor to help performance and concentration. Concentration. Definitely check out the BenQ website to see the reasoning behind all these features and how it may impact your viewing experience. Moving on to inputs, there's only three and the DisplayPort and DVI-DL support 144 hertz. As for the HDMI, you can only do up to 120 hertz, which is perfect for consoles as the PS5 can only output 120 hertz at 1080p. To some it may be a downside, but I thought my PS5 and my Switch looked phenomenal and overall had a really good experience with them. Overall, there weren't too many cons I noticed that weren't basically just personal preference. Some people dislike the appearance of the monitor as it just kind of seems too bland but I thought it fits a very minimalistic and simple look and obviously movies and shows don't look the best on this monitor as the colors don't really support those kind of viewing experiences if you do want something more geared towards those definitely go with an IPS or an OLED display or even HDR if you want to spend a bit more money another issue I had was the menu system it was a bit clunky at first and it kind of takes a while to get used to and you really do have to mess with the settings to achieve an optimal viewing experience as straight out of the box it does not look good. You'll have to put some time and effort messing with the settings to get the desired look and the menu system is just really slow. If you change one setting it does take a second or two to apply it to the screen which overall just makes it a longer process than it should be. But none of these cons are really deal breakers for me as I feel the pros really outweigh them. Overall if you're trying to ball on a budget and soup up that gaming setup of yours this monitor will be perfect for that. It doesn't break the bank and it will provide just what you're expecting. If you do editing, any color work, or want to watch movies and shows, probably not the best for you, but for the price point and the specs and features, it definitely does the job. So if you have any questions or concerns, please comment them below and I will try my best to get back at you. If I made you giggle or laugh, I think you owe me a little thumbs up. And subscribe if you want or not. I'm not your mom. I can't make you do anything, but it would be really nice if you could subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.